Let's uh, get more on uh, Japan. Let's get over to Tokyo. And Ed Rogers is the Chief Executive and uh, Chief Investment Officer for Rogers Investment Advisors. Ed, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, well, what are you looking out for today in particular? Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me back on the show. Uh, I, I, I agree with uh, Mr. Sharp. We, we think that uh, a 5 to 10 trillion yen uh, expansion is already priced into the market. If we don't see that, if we see the BOJ uh, taking little to no action, I think you could see a very sharp movement in the market, quite frankly, uh, because across the board, economists and investors are in agreement that the, the plan is to uh, inject 5 to 10 trillion more in assets, and that is needed at this point. The, the recent data has been disappointing, slightly disappointing, uh, but disappointing nonetheless, and we are looking for better numbers. We do believe there will be better numbers uh, after coming out of the BOJ and coming out going forward. Right. Well, what would be the like, impact when it comes to equities uh, in your I, I think anything in the 5 to 10 trillion range is going to have very little impact. I believe that's already priced into the markets. Um, clear moves to further weaken the yen, clear moves to spend more uh, as far as asset purchases would, would have a positive effect. Uh, there, there's room to surprise to the upside, and we would love to see that. The, the government, uh, government policymakers are clearly in favor of an expansionary policy, and there's clearly a lot of pressure on the BOJ to help. Um, the extent to which the BOJ decides to push back against that, and there have been you know, comments by Shidakao-san that there's a structural issue here, and it's not the BOJ's job to address structural issues, uh, a, straight, a slightly scary note to investors who frankly want to see all of the government entities uh, focusing their efforts in the same direction, which is a weaker yen supporting the exporters and supporting the, the recovery, which we do believe is, is taking place. Is it firmly entrenched? That's one part of uh, my question. The other part is how much of it is contingent on further yen weakness, and what are your targets when it comes to that? Yeah, um, I, we do believe that the... the the recovery is uh, firmly entrenched is a strong word. I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's got roots. I don't know they're necessarily particularly deep roots. The biggest threats probably are still external. Uh, the amount of monies that have been put aside to fund recovery efforts, that's been pretty clear and straightforward. The external shocks, uh, uh, Spain, France, and Italy all collapsing in the third and fourth quarter of this year would have a very negative effect on investor sentiment across the world, and that would impact us here in Japan. But the, the two main pillars, remember, for the Japanese economy are strong buying in the United States and strong consumer demand in China. Both of those, you know, those are Japan's two largest trading partners, and both of those countries, the, the U.S. E e recovery is frankly not even just uh, um, a moderate, it may even be a strong recovery. We, we see some very nice numbers coming out in as far as increased car sales. And internal to Japan, we're having, for, for example, this year, a 50% increase in car purchases domestically in Japan. These are important numbers. These are very important numbers to focus on. You, we are seeing significant consumer spending, consistent retail consumer spending in Japan. So there, there, there's some very good numbers out there, too, which don't seem to be getting as much commentary. But, of course, bad news sells better than good news. So we expect yeah, that when people are talking about Japan. Yeah, it's unfortunate that's the case quite often. But what are you, telling, what are you advising your um, investors out there at the moment to do? What do they invest in? We, we've been uh, spending a lot of time with investors in uh, the United States, in Europe, in the Middle East over the last four or five months. And we've been spending a lot of time with Japanese investors. We're encouraging everyone to increase their exposures to Japan. We think in a relative sense, uh, you want to get out of Europe. You may want to increase your exposure to the United States. You absolutely want to increase your exposure to Japan. Uh, and you can do it in a beta form. Uh, investing in ETFs, very simple, very cheap. We think that you can get alpha and beta, frankly, out of investing in Japanese hedge funds, which is still one of our, that's sort of our, our fastball pitch straight down the middle there. Uh, we think it's a very, very easy way to improve your portfolio. So, Ed, are you telling me that after so many false dawns, this is going to be the year of the Nikkei? Yeah, I, yeah I, frankly, I wouldn't say false dawns. Uh, we've been making money for investors investing in Japanese uh, hedge funds for the last five years. Uh, we've beaten the topics by 60-odd percent. Uh, so I think there's no false dawn. I think, frankly, it's just going to get better. And the vast majority of investors who had a zero-weight Japan and were 
overweight the United States, when the United States went down 40, 50 percent and you know, we had the global financial crisis, most of those investors are going to miss out on an ongoing positive story in Japan that's frankly getting better and better. Ed, uh, great of you to join us as ever. Ed uh, Rogers, Ephraim Rogers, Investment Advisors, uh, joining us there from Tokyo.